Hi there. So today I'm just doing a quick video because I said that I would do it of how to download and pack uh, PBR textures for upload to Second Life for the average user. Um, this video is not aimed directly at creators. Though of course, I hope that you benefit from it as well. But just for the average person who might want to occasionally retexture something or edit an object that they own, to make it a little bit more theirs or to update older items to take benefit of the new PBR features. There are literally thousands and thousands of free PBR assets available out on the internet, many of them licensed under the Creative Commons license. Creative Commons means that you are free to download those items and pretty much do what you want with them um, as long as you're not selling them for profit um, without making any changes to them. So I think technically you could, but it's just not, you know, don't, don't do that, <laughs> right? Let's not profit off of free gifts given to us by the greater community and instead share the joy of 3D texturing with everyone that we know. So if you download PBR assets and you like them, just share the site that you got them from so other people can go and find them too. So. Today we're actually going to use a website called Ambient CG, which is uh, very nice. They have loads of, of items, you know, 2,200 assets. They do also have, uh, you know, a supporter login, uh, ways that you can contribute uh, monetarily to the site if you like what they do. This lets them create more materials for us, and I think that's pretty nifty. So we're going to go ahead and first uh, download a texture that we like the look of. Um, one thing to note, uh, just for the Second Life implementation of PBR, it does not support what are called displacement maps. That's where when you look at a texture like this and you can see that it is actually physically raised above the surface of the sphere, it will not do that in Second Life. You will still get a normal map that will make it look nice and it will look 3D from some angles, but it will not actually be 3D. So just something to keep in mind if you're looking at something, you download it and you're disappointed in the result, um, that may be why. So uh, it's just not a feature that most real-time engines support, just for the record. So it's not like Linden Labs not doing their jobs here. Displacement's really hard. So I think this map looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and download it. That'll also give you the opportunity to see what the difference I'm talking about is. We can see over here on the side, there are a whole bunch of file types and sizes to choose from. For Second Life purposes, if you're just downloading these for yourself, you're fine to download the 2K or 1K sizes. Um, 1K would be 1024 by 1024, which is the maximum size that Second Life supports. 20, uh, 2K is 2048 by 2048, which is two times that size. But sometimes if you upload a, a little bit larger texture, uh, Second Life just kind of compresses it nicer. So it just looks a little bit better when you look at it in world. So either of these would be fine. The 4K and 8K maps, if you are not a creator who is using these in 3D software to texture your items, these are really just a waste of hard drive space for you. You don't need these. Second Life can't use them, and if you look at this, 8K maps, 960 megabytes, it's almost an entire gig for a single texture. Don't do it. You don't need it. Don't waste your space. So I'm just going to go ahead and download the 1K maps because I think for what we need, this will be fine. So I'm just going to download these, save them somewhere I can find them, and then I'm going to introduce you to uh, II's GLTF Packer. II is a member of the Second Life community and they have very generously coded and released this GLTF packer for us for free for everyone. So I think that's super neat. What this will let us do is take all those textures we just downloaded, compress them into one file that will upload very nicely to Second Life and make it really easy for us to apply those materials. So just scroll on down. If you have more questions about how this works, you're free to absolutely look through and read their documentation. In fact, if you're going to be using it, please read the documentation. <laughs> um, just like a cooking show, I've already downloaded this previously. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and open the file that I downloaded earlier and already unzipped. 
Alpha Packer does not require install of any kind. It actually just, um, <clears throat> pardon, it just needs to be unzipped. So you'll just open that, unzip it somewhere that you can find it, and then you can go ahead and just double click on the exe and open it. Uh, the first time that you open this, Windows may pop up with a warning that this software is from an untrusted source. As long as you downloaded this actually from II's website, which I will link in the description and which I did previously also link on Twitter, um, it is safe. If you downloaded it from somewhere else, I can't give you any promises of safety. So my recommendation is please, anytime you are looking for resources, make sure that you are downloading them from the source and that this source is reliable. Um, even when you go out looking for textures, please make sure that the website you know, looks legitimate. You can even Google the name of the website and the word scam and people on the internet will tell you if they've had good experiences with that site or not um, before you go and download files onto your computer that could potentially cause harm. So be safe out there, please. So we've got our packer and we've got our freshly downloaded texture, which is this rock here. So we're going to go ahead and just extract that into a folder of its own so we can find it. And then begins the task of just matching up these maps with their respective slots in the packer. You will see um, this base map here, it's called color. Sometimes it will be called diffuse or albedo. Um, these are all the same thing. So base color, color, diffuse, albedo, they're all the same texture for our purposes. And so that is going to go here into the base color slot. If there's any alpha, we would put that here in the alpha channel. I don't believe that we have any, so we will just leave that blank. Ambient occlusion, we'll go here into the occlusion channel. Uh, roughness, it's this one here called roughness, that goes here. Uh, met metalness, in this case, is the same thing as metallic. And then here we have two separate normal maps. For Second Life, we want to make sure that we use a normal map that says GL in the title somewhere, or it may say OpenGL or OGL, and those are all going to be the same. And that is because Second Life is an OpenGL-based uh, rendering engine, and so those will be going the correct direction. If you were to use the wrong one, this DX one, which is for DirectX, um, they would be reversed. So anything that is supposed to stick out would stick in instead, and vice versa. This final texture box is for emission, and that is light. So if you have a texture that has a glowing portion, it will have a special map that will go here in the emission box, and that will make just part of the texture glow, which is really cool because previously, in order to do that in Second Life, it was quite complicated to the point where most of us didn't bother. Once you've filled in all of your slots, you'll go ahead and just click Save at the bottom of the packer. You'll see that it's created a folder here that says GLTF Textures, and those are going to be the combined texture files that it has made that are the correct format for Second Life. So that's these here. We also now have a file that says GLTF, and this is what we will want to upload to SL. We're going to click on over here to Second Life and open your inventory. Click on, you may have a plus at the top of your inventory. I think in Firestorm it would be at the bottom, um, depending on which view you use. But there should be somewhere in this inventory thing, amidst the whole mess, a plus sign. And you would click that and then click on Upload and Material. Then you'll just select the GLTF file that we created and click open and you will see that it has already filled in all the slots for us in the materials uploader. If you do not have Premium Plus then this will be uh, 
Oop, I uploaded the wrong texture. That was from earlier. Let's try to be consistent, right? And use the right one. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so it has, it still does the same thing though. That's how easy it is. You just click on it, it fills everything in for you. All right, so now I have my, my texture. Um, if you are not premium plus, then each slot that you fill in is going to be 10 lindens. So if it's just base color, metallic roughness, and normal, it's 30 lindens. If you also have an emissive texture, it will be 40. If you have premium plus, texture uploads are free, and that does also apply to materials, which I think is very generous and I'm happy for. So everything there is correct. So we're gonna go ahead and just click save at the bottom and it will upload everything for us and create a new material for us in our inventory. And there it is. And we're gonna go ahead and just res a cube. And now we can click over here in the editing pane and where it says textures, we're gonna switch that to PBR metallic roughness. Then you can either choose from your inventory and select it in the materials folder, or you can click and drag it from your inventory into the texture selection box here on the side. If you would like to retexture only one face of the object, you would just drag it from your inventory right onto that face. And yes, you can combine multiple PBR maps on a single object. As you can see, we don't have displacement, but you do still get some of that 3D effect just from the normal map. Um, normal maps under PBR look so much better than they ever did before, because when you upload that GLTF file, they're not compressed by the viewer. So it's at the full quality and that it originally was with no loss of detail. The if you upload them separately, they are compressed. So the only way to get them uncompressed is by using the GLTF file uploader. Now, there are some things that are different in the build floater for PBR materials than you are used to. You are accustomed to being able to tint and change the transparency of these textures here in the build floater. You cannot do that with PBR materials because they're kind of a separate object. So if you would like to make any changes to those, what you need to do instead is click Edit Selected. If you want to just edit one face of the object, you would select that face and then click Edit Selected. That pulls up the Editing Material tab where you have a few things that you are able to do, such as tint. Tinting PBR materials, frankly, just looks a lot nicer than it ever did before because the lighting is separate from the base color map. It's actually applied like real time. So you can do a lot more with one color of a PBR material than you could with one color of one of the Blinfong legacy materials. You can also use this page to change the alpha of the object. One is fully opaque. Zero is fully transparent, but you do need to select blend in order to see those changes. But if you do set it to fully opaque, please set it back to opaque to make sure that you don't have any alpha glitch issues. And that's just like setting it to alpha mode none for traditional blend fog materials. You can also edit here the metallic factor and roughness factor. Metallic is how metallic it is, how metally it is, right? And you can change that value here if there is any metallic to the texture, which in this case there isn't, you would see a change. Um, and the roughness is how shiny it is. One is going to be most rough and zero is going to be most shiny. <laughs> it's the opposite of what you're used to with specular. Um, so just something to keep in mind. And that's it. So let's say, all right, I applied this material, but I actually changed my mind. I would like this to just be a plywood cube, or I'd like to just use regular textures from my inventory, and I need to take these off. You absolutely can do that, and it's very easy, but it's not super intuitive, so I will show you how to do it. 
So to remove a PBR material from an object or surface, you need to select the faces that you want to take it off of, or if we want to take it off the whole object, you know, just select all faces. You're going to click in the texture selection box here, and rather than selecting any materials or anything from your inventory, you're actually just going to click this little None button. That will set it back to our default plywood cube. Then over here, where it says Material PBR Metallic, just set that back to Textures. And that's it. Now it's back just how it was. No more PBR. It's just a cube. And that's it. Pretty easy, I think. It may take a couple tries to get used to the whole process, but I think once you get started, you just may not be able to stop and you'll have to retexture your whole house because baked lighting is just not anywhere as, as important under the new PBR release. All lighting is dynamic, it happens in real time, and we don't need to bake it into our environment to enjoy it. And I think that is so cool. I'm really excited about PBR and I hope that you are too, um, but I'm sleepy, so I'm going to end it here. And I hope that you all have a beautiful, wonderful night and have lots of fun. If you have any questions, please just let me know. If I don't know the answer, I will look it up for you. That's kind of what I do. I read the manual and I report back what I found. So I, I am an encyclopedia. Don't be afraid to ask. And I hope you all have a wonderful night.